Well, so today we have come to the end of this particular uh, video and uh, you will be having your last class today. Uh, so today we will be discussing the measurement of two phase parameters. Uh, the last parameter which I thought was important for discussion was the estimation of flow patterns. Okay. So, therefore, for uh, I was thinking initially we had discussed initially we had discussed the different techniques to measure the pressure drop and we found out that for measuring pressure drop we have uh, we do it for any particular fluid flow problem be it a single phase flow or a two phase flow or whatever it is. But what are the extra challenges in measuring pressure drop in two phase flow situations? This was number one. After that the next thing the estimation of void fraction which you do not need in single phase flow. It is a unique parameter which you need to know for any analysis of two phase flow or multi phase flow situations. Okay. And so after that apart from the void fraction the in situ composition the next thing which you also need to know is the in situ distribution of the two phases. It is not always sufficient to know that what is how much proportion of the two phases are there, but it is equally important to know in what ways the two particular phases or the more than one phases how they are distributed. Because depending upon the distribution their interfacial area of contact and all other hydrodynamic parameters they are going to vary. <coughs> so, therefore, first we discussed the in situ composition how to estimate it. Now, we will discuss the in situ flow distribution or the phase distribution how to analyze it. Now, it is very evident you can very well understand that the it, it will appear to you that measuring the in situ composition is a greater challenge because you have to get something quantitative out of the measurements. But in this case it is a qualitative description of the way the two phases are distributed. So, definitely whatever techniques we had discussed for measuring or for estimating the void fraction should be applicable for measuring the flow pattern estimation also or rather for estimating the flow patterns. Okay. The first technique which comes to our mind is naturally simply visualization. If it is the two phase flow, the two phases they are transparent and they are the flow is occurring through a transparent channel then the best thing to do is to just watch it and find it out. Okay, this is the, the this is the primary technique. If you use other techniques also, it has to be calibrated with the visualization technique. Principally, just the same thing that I had mentioned in your void fraction measurement here, the same principle applies. We shall be exploiting any particular physical property which is widely different for the two fluids. It can be difference in density, it can be difference in electrical conductivity, it can be difference in the uh, your absorption coefficients, it can, can be any particular sort of a physical property which is widely different for the two phases. So, observing the variation of that particular physical property, we shall estimate how the two phases are distributed. So, just in a nutshell the thing is I will not going into the details of the techniques which we have already discussed in the void fraction estimation. Certain other things I would like to discuss. For example, the natural techniques or the techniques which at once comes to your mind is definitely first is the visual technique and associated with the visual technique are the photographic methods. Naturally, you cannot say that I have observed it visually, definitely we can draw schematics of it, but for, for the outside world it will be much more convincing if you can take out some photographs and show it. Now, this is a very reliable technique because the most reliable thing naturally is our own eye, is not it? But definitely it also has its, its own disadvantages as I have written it down. In this particular slide, I have just, uh, uh, I have just uh, written down the, the, the basic problems which all of us know. The first thing is that if the flow is occurring generally we will find they are occur at very high speeds. Now, when they occur at such high speeds it is very difficult to distinguish between the two phases. Particularly for annular flow for dispersed bubbly flow you will just find something is moving through the passage. You, it is very difficult to apprehend whether it is a bubbly mixture moving or whether it is gas core with and train droplets and your uh, liquid film moving it is very difficult to differentiate. The other thing is usually what happens 
for particularly for photographic techniques what we find there is a series of reflection and refraction through the curved walls and through the interfaces. So, therefore, very frequently we can just see what is happening near the walls, what is happening inside the channel it is very difficult for us to find out by using photographic techniques. This is the second thing. The third thing is suppose you have a large number of information, it is very difficult to analyze such a large amount of information. So, these are the basic problems of your visualization techniques which include your visual observations as well as your photographic techniques. The photographic techniques might include high speed photography, high speed cinematography, high speed videography and so on and so forth depending upon how much information and what information you have you want to get out of these observations. This is number one definitely when you have a transparent test section, transparent fluids or in, in even in an opaque as container or in an opaque pipe if you have some transparent windows you can use this ok. Apart from that just as I had mentioned in the file I was discussing the void fraction measurement definitely there can be absorption of x-rays. The amount of x-rays which will be absorbed that will give you some idea of more or less the distribution is not it. So, x-ray absorption, multi beam gamma densitometry as I have written down this is particular one particular technique. The other things which are no impedance technique is definitely one difference in electrical conductivity ok. What happens suppose liquid is flowing, it has got a high conductivity, moment suppose a bubble comes and touches the electrical probe definitely the conductivity instantaneously falls. I have got certain pictures I believe to show you these particular things. Yeah. So, in this particular case you will understand how this conductivity probe technique works. Here we are working on the basis of a point electrode probe where we measure the voltage difference between one particular electrode which is flush mounted with the walls and another electrode a point electrode where the tip is only conducting. Now, what happens when only water flows through this then definitely we have a high voltage across this. Basically, the current which flows that is passed through a resistance and the voltage across the resistor that is recorded as a function of time that is either recorded in an oscilloscope or in a PC or whatever it is ok. So, therefore, what we find that only when water is flowing we have a high voltage ok, only when air is flowing we have a very low voltage output. Now, suppose bubbly flow is there, so we have a large amount of water here small small bubbles will come they will strike the probe periodically ok. Moment that happens moment the bubbles come and strike we have some sort of fluctuations in the high voltage signal. Better than this signal actually the thing which we get here if I draw it and show you it is just if I draw it you can see the, 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 the thing I will just draw it down. So, therefore, if you see you find that only when air is, water is there you get a high voltage only with the air you get a low voltage. When there is bubbly flow usually what happens you get such sort of spikes ok. Now, thing is if it is dispersed bubbly flow dense dispersion of bubbles then naturally this signal is going to be very wavy just like I have shown in the slide. And if there are few bubbles coming and striking then you will get some such spikes and otherwise a more or less a continuous output. Now, when we have slug flow this is for a vertical pipe I am showing you. If we have slug flow then in that case what happens at some particular point the Taylor bubble comes and hits it. When the Taylor bubble comes the conductivity falls instantaneously and as long as the Taylor bubble moves the conductivity is almost at 0. Moment the Taylor bubble goes away the liquid slug comes suddenly your voltage it rises up. Again when Taylor bubble comes it falls down. So, therefore, you can see this particular periodic phenomenon is very well captured by the conductivity probe signals by its alternate peaks and valleys as it is shown. Remember one thing this is a true signal, so that is why we actually we should have got some square wave sort of a thing is not it, it should have been square wave. But the thing is first there is a liquid film here and there are other oscillations, so naturally therefore, you get some sort such sort of spikes and the, due to certain aerations in the liquid slug you get such oscillating signals in the liquid slug region. 
Now, we keep on increasing the air flow rate what happens the, the Taylor bubbles they become larger, larger, more irregular they almost occupy the entire cross section and what do you find initially the average voltage was at high voltage then it was periodic. Here if you notice actually the average voltage has fallen down and there are spikes showing that occasional passages of liquid chunks irregular liquid masses and you can very well understand the chaotic nature of the churn flow pattern from this particular signal is not it it is totally an erratic signal and when you get annular flow it is almost pure gas flowing. So, you get al an almost 0 voltage signal here where the few spikes which occur when liquid droplets come and strike the probe. Is it clear to you? So, if you observe you will find more or less bubbly flow is just the mirror image of the annular flow pattern usually. This is for dispersed bubbly flow, but for actual bubbly flow you will just get the mirror image of annular flow and the slack flow pattern it is almost as if it is alternating between the bubbly flow pattern and the uh, annular flow pattern. Sometimes it resembles bubbly flow, sometimes annular flow, again bubbly, again annular in that way it goes on and churn flow is a totally erratic situation. So, simply by observing the signals you find that more or less you can get an idea about the type of uh, flow pattern which is being <coughs> distributed. I have shown this for a vertical pipe, in horizontal pipe what extra you have? Stratified flow, stratified smooth flow, stratified wavy flow. Okay. So, therefore, we will be discussing by a proper design of this probe, we can actually differentiate between the different flow patterns. Where the problem arises? Problem at firstly, the, the first thing is it is an it is cheap, it is instantaneous response. So, therefore, moment the bubble touches, there is a drop in the voltage, again when water touches, again there is a rise in voltage. So, the in the response is instantaneous. This is one good thing about the conductivity probe technique. It is simple, hazard free, all those advantages are of course there. Okay. But the thing is that the first thing is we need a very good design of the probe in order to identify all the different flow patterns, particularly where the problem arises at the transitions. Say it is bubbly slug transition. Under that condition, it is very difficult for us to differentiate between these periodic things and if you have a large number of spikes here. Then it is then sometimes it becomes very difficult to differentiate between wispy annular flows and bubbly flows. Okay, so, and, but if we use a proper differentiation technique or rather if we, if we define our thresholds very correctly, then identification of flow patterns by the conductivity probe technique is not very difficult. There is another technique say that the thing which we do is by measurement of the pressure drop signals. Now, there is number of things that we can measure. First thing is we can simply measure the pressure drop as a function of velocity. Okay, we keep on increasing one velocity keeping the other constant and then we measure the, the, the pre pressure drops under different circumstances. After that suppose we plot say pressure drop or the pressure gradient whatever it is as a function of one particular flow rate, flow rate of phase 1 keeping the other constant flow rate of phase 2 is say I will show you graphs which we have generated in our own laboratories regarding this. Then we will find that definitely as flow rate increases there will be an increase in the pressure gradient or the pressure drop, but the curve will not be a continuous curve throughout. It will have different slopes in different flow patterns. Okay. For example, I have got one such example, if you observe this particular slide you will find that we have obtained different slopes for different flow patterns. This is for stratified smooth, this was for liquid liquid flows that we have got it. In liquid liquid flows we could not use the conductivity probe technique, <coughs> why liquid was sticking to it and then a yeah, lot of problems were there. Okay. So, th under that condition we use the pressure gradient or the pressure drop technique. We found that particularly here if you observe this is the stratified smooth mm, pressure gradient and then this is a stratified wavy, then this is the plug, this is the dispersed. So, we got quite different 
your uh, slopes or quite different curves for different flow patterns. So, this could give you a rough estimate of the flow pattern, but this is not a very good technique. A better technique will be if you if we can record continuously record the pressure fluctuations with time. Just like we have recorded the, the, uh, the variation of effective conductivity with time, same way if we can record the pressure fluctuations with time, then probably we get a better technique. Okay? There is one other technique which we can use for vertical flows. That is suppose for vertical flow usually we know the gravitational pressure gradient is the most important. So, if we write down the, the, the expression for the vertical pressure or that is the pressure gradient under vertical flow conditions more or less it is alpha rho g plus 1 minus alpha rho l is not it. So, you into g. So, therefore, what we find is when we have bubbly flow then naturally this term becomes important and when we have annular flow this term becomes important. So, therefore, when we find that the pressure gradient it is close to this we can tell it is annular flow, when we find the pressure gradient is close to this we call it we say it is bubbly flow and when it is intermediate we say it is slug flow. This is a very crude technique, but this can be used for a rough estimation. The best thing is to record the pressure fluctuations, if by using a transducer we can convert the pressure signal into an electrical signal and we can continuously record the electrical signal then probably we get a better estimate of flow pattern. But from that also we have found that the variation of pressure signal or the pre pressure it is the variation of pressure at a particular point with time this is not a very very reliable method. So, in order to get useful information from these random signals often we use some statistical techniques. Okay? Whenever see we have some random signals we cannot extract useful information. Say for example, from the pressure signal we are not able to identify flow patterns. From the conductivity probe signals we are not able to identify the flow patterns very very correctly. If we perform some statistical or any particular analysis of these random signals then we will get a more useful information. Probably I will not have time to discuss in details the statistical analysis, but if you go through my web course you will find that the discussions are there on two particular commonly used statistical techniques. They are the first technique is the power spectral density function analysis and the second technique is the probability density function analysis. Now, I will not be going into details of this power spectral density function analysis and the probability density function analysis. This I leave as a self study which you will be getting handouts and it is also available in my web course. Okay? I will just show you what are the usually we perform the power spectral density function analysis for pressure drop signals. And this PDF analysis this is performed for your conductivity probe technique or your radiation attenuation techniques. For these particular thing they are used. We can use other techniques as well, but these are the commonly used methods when we have to go for non-conventional flow geometry or non-conventional fluid pair something then we go for other techniques. Okay. If time permits, I will just tell you very briefly regarding the PSTF and the PDF technique, but otherwise this is left as a self study for you. Now, the only thing which I would like to show you is that if you perform the PSDF technique, what we usually find suppose we perform the, the, that particular technique okay, and then we find that for the pressure drop, if we analyze the pressure drop signals usually we get output something of this sort. This is the PSDF analysis as a function of frequency with frequency. Now, when we have a stratified flow distribution or we have a separated flow distribution, usually we have a peak at 0 frequency and then we have something of this sort. Okay. 
and when we have a dispersed distribution it is something of this sort ok. Usually if you perform PSDF for pressure drop analysis for any particular dispersed distribution we have almost a uniform frequency for all particular cases. So, it gives you a flat curve like this and for any particular separated flow distribution any particular separated flow you get a peak at f equal to 0 and that de uh, decays at <coughs> increasing frequency ok. For separated flow you get this you get a peak at 0 frequency and this decays rapidly ok decaying at increasing f and when we have slack flow then what we have we find that this separated flow peak it shifts to some higher value of frequency we have something of this sort this is for intermittent flow. This is usually what we get ok. So, therefore, if we get a peak something of this we know definitely it is a separated flow pattern. If it is vertical flow we can definitely say it is nothing but angular <coughs> flow, but if it is horizontal flow we cannot say whether it is stratified or whether it is annular. We just know that it is separated flow. If we get something of this sort we know it is dispersed pattern. If it is a gas liquid <coughs> system then fine it will be bubbly flow because we will always get gas dispersed in liquid ok. But if it is a liquid liquid flow we do not know whether it is oil in water dispersion or water in oil dispersion that problem is there. And for intermittent flow pattern that means something is coming and going again it is coming and going for example, the slack flow pattern we find that this peak is shifted to some particular frequency which gives you the frequency of passage of the Taylor bubbles. Okay, so, this basically gives you the frequency of passage of the Taylor bubbles the shift of the frequency. So, more or less if you get these particular PHDFs you are in a position to tell that which particular flow pattern you are going to encounter. But unfortunately under normal circumstances we find that we rarely get such well defined PHDFs. Actually the PHDFs which we get are something that I have shown in this particular slide. Usually we never get something which is here and which is decaying down. We get we get usually we get a PHDF which has a peak at 0 frequency showing that it is a separated flow pattern and then it does not decay rapidly to, uh, z, uh, to, to 0 at higher frequency. It then takes up a form something of the dispersed flow, flow pattern. Why? Because we almost never get pure annular flow ok. There are droplets is not it in the gas core. So, therefore, it has some characteristics which show that it combines the characteristics of annular flow pattern as well as the dispersed flow pattern which is the actual physical appearance of the annular flow pattern in industries ok. Or we may get something of this sort when it is wavy annular depending upon the uh, your uh, the frequency of the waves we get a peak here and since it is separated we get something of this sort. So, from this type of super superimposed or superposed PSDS we very frequently do not get useful information. The constraints of the PSDS so therefore, pressure air fluctuation or analysis of pressure fluctuations or recording the, uh, the transient variation of pressure with time it is not always very useful. Firstly the raw signals do not give us much we have to perform some statistical analysis usually for pressure signals we perform the PSDF analysis. The problems of PSDF analysis as I have already said the first problem I have written down here identification of flow regimes is not always clear because we usually get a superimposition of spectra we do not get a well defined spectra under ordinary circumstances. What is the ne next thing it cannot distinguish between the two types of separated flow it cannot distinguish between the two types of dispersed flow this we have already discussed. Other thing is see the thing is it is we can very well distinguish between annular flow bubbly flow slack flow under ordinary circumstances ok. Only when we have very high flow rates 
or fluctuating flow it is difficult. Under such conditions PHDF also does not give us a proper estimation of flow patterns. So, therefore, conditions which are I have written it down in this particular form conditions which are most difficult to interpret by visual means are the conditions which cannot be identified by this technique. So, therefore, sometimes it becomes very there is no point in using this technique ok. And the other thing is there can be vibrations in the test trick when flow patterns flow rates are occurring under such high conditions there is a pump there, there are so many things vibrations with the, these vibrations can also be recorded and we will mistake them as fluctuations in pressure signal. So, these are the problems. So, in short the techniques are firstly visual techniques definitely we will use them for calibration, but we cannot use them for high flow rates, non transparent sections and so on and so forth. In transparent sections also as I have told you photography does not give us a good estimate particularly due to the multiple reflection refraction, refraction at the wall this is number 1. Next is pressure the common techniques pressure, pressure drop measurements, pressure fluctuation measurements the problems I have already mentioned pressure drop measurement is definitely not very accurate. It just gives us a rough estimate of say bubbly is occur occurring here, slug is occurring here. But suppose I would like to find out what will happen at any particular flow rate combination directly from the pressure drop measurements it is not always possible. It just gives us the trend of variation of flow pattern nothing else ok. And the, the other thing is radiation absorption techniques it has its own problems regarding the handling of radiation etcetera etcetera which we had already discussed in our void fraction measurement things in great details we had discussed. So, I will not be going into the details anymore. The last technique which is the most commonly used technique is the impedance technique which is based either on the conductivity difference between the two fluids or on the capacitance difference between the two fluids. Now, usually when we record any particular random signals ok it can be pressure drop fluctuations it can be fluctuations in conductivity it can be fluctuations in the uh, your uh, the amount of uh, radiation which is absorbed by the two phase mixture whenever we have we record any such fluctuating signal in order to get useful information as i have said we need to perform some analysis phdf and pdf are the most basic analysis there are much better analysis a chaos analysis wavelet analysis and so on and so forth. They are being used nowadays, but the most two basic analysis are PSDF and PDF. PSDF and PDF the mathematical portion I will not be going into the details of it. The only thing which I would like to tell you is that as I was telling you the PSDF it just gives you an idea regarding the fluctuations in the frequency and PDF the probability density function analysis it just tells us that the probability that the void fraction will lie in any particular range ok. So, for that what we do we divide the entire suppose we are plotting alpha versus time ok. This alpha can be obtained from conductivity measurements it can be obtained from radiation absorption measurements it can be obtained from anything. Now, if we divide the entire alpha into a large number of delta alphas the divisions same way we divide time into a large number of delta t divisions. This may be we have div we have divided into say delta alpha i number of divisions and delta t j number of divisions. Now, when it is bubbly flow what is the probability of finding or where it is will we find alpha the maximum number of times at at low void fraction is not it is not it because most of the time it is it is only water very rarely will bubbles come and strike ok. So, therefore, this particular if we plot alpha versus time most of the time we will find a signal at low alpha and sometimes it will be varying in this particular way. So, for most of the time alpha will lie in the low vo voidage region ok. So, so, the probability of finding alpha at the low voidage value is much higher as compared to the probability of finding alpha at the higher void fractions. So, if we plot this particular probability as a function of say alpha ok 
usually we use void fraction if we plot it as a function of alpha then what we find the probability will be high at low alpha when it is bubbly flow you agree with me so therefore we will get a peak something of this sort which denotes your bubbly flow did you get this point or do you want me to repeat this part it's clear to you the the thing is what we do we get a, a signal suppose we we get any particular voltage versus time signal we get something of something of this sort i'll not put voltage i'll put alpha versus time that will be alpha as a function of time with alpha okay so therefore we get some sort of a signal <laughs> in this particular situation say we'll get something of something of this sort we get now for whatever signal we can get okay now if we find we'll find that the probability of finding alpha in the low voltage region or low alpha region is high in this particular case alpha or rather we get more alpha values in the low alpha region as compared to high alpha region so if we take the probability density function of or rather we perform the pdf analysis of this particular signal what we will get we will get a high since the pdf will be high at low alpha we will get a peak at low alpha and then we will get we will we'll get a, 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 a very low sort of a thing at high alpha is not it. So, if we plot probability versus alpha is it clear to you. So, therefore, when we get or rather the probability of finding alpha at lower voided values is high only when there is or rather the probe comes primarily in contact with your water phase. So, therefore, this shows bubbly flow for annular flow what happens annular flow this signal is something of this sort is not it. So, therefore, the probability of finding alpha is more in the high voidage region. So, therefore, if we plot annular flow we will get some a pdf something of this sort agreed and for slack flow what do you expect slack flow is simply something it, it will be something of this sort. So, here if we take the probability density function then we will find the, the probability density function p d f versus alpha if we plot we will get one particular void uh, peak here we will get one particular peak here. So, this gives us a very objective way of finding out or rather identifying the flow patterns. The mathematical details I will not go because I am running short of time in my web course you are going to find it you are supposed to go through it and understand the mathematical analysis ok. But remember we perform statistical analysis for a better appraisal of the flow situation for a more objective identification of the flow patterns. Now, just before I end I would like to mention one particular interesting thing the thing is suppose we have used the conductivity probe technique for identifying flow patterns ok. We get different signals the conductivity probe technique what it does it measures the effective conductivity of the particular flowing mixture when the effective conductivity is high we know it is predominantly liquid when it is low we know it is predominantly gas when it is very fluctuating we know that lot of interfaces it must be interact it must be coming across lot of interfaces or in other words it must be a dispersed sort of a thing. When we find that it is not much fluctuating then we know that well lot of interactions it there are no lot not lot of interfaces which are there. So, it might be separated sort of a situation is not it. So, in this particular way we can identify or we can differentiate between the flow patterns which occur under different flow situations. Now, the thing is the design of the conductivity probe is very very important how we are going to design it because depending upon the design we can increase the flexibility or the range of identification of the flow patterns. So, this one particular aspect I would like to discuss with you I would like to take up a horizontal pipe why because in horizontal pipe we have seen that the number of flow patterns are much more. What are the flow patterns can you tell me for a horizontal pipe 
gas liquid flow we are taking for the time being and we will be discussing same things apply for other pair of fluids as well. Okay. What are the different flow patterns that we encountered in horizontal flow? Louder? Annular slug we definitely get, definitely. We would we will get annular flow pattern, slug flow pattern. Bubbly, let me write down first, okay. Stratified, now stratified see annular flow pattern it will be something of this sort. Okay. We will also get one annular wavy sort of a flow pattern, okay. fair, fair more or less there will be lot of waves and definitely the uh, liquid film thickness will be less here and it will be more in the lower pipe and here we might get some sort of a droplet sort of a thing. We have something known as the plaque flow pattern where we have definite plaques which are flowing like this in the water. Okay. And what is the slug flow pattern? In the slug definitely we have something of this sort, there are lot of aerations, again we have something of this sort. So, this flow pattern, the difference between the two is here there is no aeration, here there is aeration. Then we have bubbly, bubbly is very simple, we have lot of bubbles of different sizes and shapes. After that what we have? We have stratified flow patterns. Now, stratified there are two types, this is gas, this is liquid, this is a smooth stratified flow pattern and we can also have a wavy stratified flow pattern. These waves finally, they touch the wall and they give rise to the plug flow pattern. Hmm? So, we want to identify, we want to distinguish between so many flow patterns in this particular case. Now, what do you expect that one particular probe at one particular location can give you so many differences? What can be the optimum design or how many probes, how they will be placed, what we can do so that from those particular signals, we can actually differentiate between this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 flow, flow patterns. If we can differentiate between all of this, then there is a meaning of using the optic or sorry the conductivity probe for identification of flow patterns. Because differentiating between slug and stratified smooth that we can do visually also, we do not need anything for it. So, what will be the design of the probes for this particular purpose? Now, for design this has been proposed by in one particular paper and I would just like to discuss it. What they did it was they used two flat plate electrodes here as one particular electrode of the probe. And so, they were just mounted on the wall. What about the other electrodes? One electrode was flush mounted with this wall, say this is A. There was ad another electrode which was say, it was just inserted say about 3 millimeters from the wall. This electrode was B. Okay. And then they used an uninsulated needle which was just 3 millimeters from the lower wall. This was C and these two electrodes they were E, D and E. <coughs> so, what was measured? Basically the voltage across A and D was measured, B and D was measured, C and E were measured etcetera, etcetera. And from the outputs that we got, we try to differentiate between the different flow patterns. Now, let us see how it was done. Say suppose we have plug flow pattern. Plug means what, we, what is going to happen? We have just regular such plugs. So, if we have such regular plugs, what will happen? This particular B, this will give you, if we take voltage versus time, this will give you definitely square wave type of thing. Agreed? Okay. And when we have slug flow pattern, what happens? There is aeration in the liquid slugs, is not it? So, therefore, from this particular probe B signal, definitely for the slug flow pattern, we are not going to have such nice square wave sort of a thing. We will be having, having such type of a signal. 
definitely there will be a periodic phenomena here, but there will be spikes here showing that there are aerations in the liquid slug and here also there, there, there may be certain undulations. So, probe B can differentiate between plug and slug by the undulations it shows in the peaks and the valleys. Is it clear to you? If we take probe A, what happens? Along probe A, see one particular Taylor bubble, it is it is sliding across this. So, definitely if you, you will find that definitely you will not get such nice square wave sort of a thing, but you will get some such sort of a signal. Okay. So, this basically differentiates between plug and slug. Why was this A installed here? A is installed to show whether there is a liquid film or not. If there is a very thin liquid film that cannot be detected by B, that can be detected by A. So, if there is a liquid film, then through the liquid film, the circuit is established between A and D. So, we get an output. So, def definitely there will be different signals from A and B if we use the or rather when it is annular flow pattern. Clear? In annular flow pattern B what you get? Annular flow pattern you will, you will simply it is voltage versus time, you will almost simply get some output at 0 voltage. If there are, if there are certain gas say if you get something of this sort uh, annular wavy sort of a thing, then definitely we will get some sort of spikes etcetera, is not it? The annular flow pattern probe B you will get almost a 0 voltage output probe A since there is a thin liquid film you will not get a 0 voltage output you will get a positive voltage output. You get my point is it clear to all of you and if the film is wavy then there will be oscillations of the output of A. You get the point B will always be dry if the film is thin B will always be dry is not it. So, it will always give you a 0 voltage output, but A when it is static when it is annular smooth you will get some particular voltage here, because there is a thin annular film and what will be the voltage value? It will be proportional to the liquid film thickness and if it is wavy the, vol the uh, interface is wavy you will get some sort of fluctuations. So, you can very well understand between your annular and annular wavy we can distinguish using probe A and probe B. Okay. When probe B it gives you completely 0 sig signal for the entire time it is annular, when it gives sometimes 0, sometimes positive again 0 then it is slug. So, annular slug if you have to differentiate probe B is fine, annular annular wavy probe A has to be used again slug and plug if you have to use then probe B was fine agreed. Now, when you have bubbly what will you get again here more or less it, it, it is always in contact with water bubbles do not come so close to the wall. So, therefore, you will get a, a maximum voltage signal from A and here very frequently bubbles will come and strike and hit. Okay. So, therefore, for probe B what you will get voltage versus time you will get a very high voltage with large number of fluctuations. Whenever a bubble comes and hits you will get some fluctuations, get my point. So, therefore, from here bubbly flow also you can differentiate. So, we have differentiated between annular slug, bubbly, annular wavy, plug, everything we could differentiate. Now, what about stratified? See stratified if you just have probe A and B both of them are dry. Okay. So, how to differentiate between stratified and stratified wavy? You cannot do using these two probes. So, therefore, we have an uninsulated needle here. Okay. This insulated needle it is almost 3 millimeters from the bottom of the pipe. So, for, so, what happens more or less if it is stratified then the naturally the liquid film thickness will be more than a liquid it will more than 3 millimeters is not it. So, therefore, depending upon how much of it is immersed in water we get a signal from probe C. If the signal is fluctuating it shows we have a wavy stratified, if the signal is smooth we it shows that we do not have we have a smooth stratified flow. 
So, remember one thing you can use your conduct and since it is a very cheap technique you can use different designs and from these different designs we can actually find out or rather we can actually differentiate between the different flow patterns. Now, remember one thing suppose I tell you that I differentiate between stratified wavy and smooth then in that case you just need probes you do not need the other probes ok. If we are dealing with vertical pipes and not horizontal pipes then there are just 4 flow patterns bubbly slug annular churn there you do not need 3, three particular probes what you need you need one wall mounted probe and this particular probe probably it is located at the center that will give you the difference. So, depending upon the applications you are going to decide how many number of probes and the location of probes the design of the probes which you need in this particular case. The entire thing I have shown in the slide here. So, if you see the slide I think it is going to be little more clear <coughs> horizontal pipe here of course, this is probe A wall mounted probe B 3 millimeters and probe C here ok. So, therefore, and we are measuring the voltage across probes and the wall mounted large electrodes. So, therefore, what do we find if it is say elongated bubble see probe B signal these are actual signals which we have got this probe B signals they are square wave sort of things ok. A signals are not so very square wave why because the Taylor bubble just slides across this ok. So, therefore, since it does not hit this particular probe, so we do not get such nice square wave sort of a thing and since there is a liquid film here, so it does not go to 0 voltage. You can observe we, we get something of this sort which is not as good a square wave as probe B. This was plug flow or elongated bubble flow they say. Moment we get slug what happens lot of aerations occur in the liquid slug these are the aerations due to aerations large number of bubbles come they hit the probe. So, therefore, although the average voltage lies at a higher V max, but we have large number of aerations large Taylor bubble again large number of aerations. So, this is slug you can very well see plug and slug are very well differentiated in this C annular B it is completely dry A since there is a liquid film there is there are certain spikes here moment droplets start coming into the liquid uh, sorry into the gas core we get some spikes in the 0 voltage signal of B and we get for for waviness moment waviness starts we get this sort of a signal for A. So, you can very well differentiate between wavy annular here and annular here they are definitely different. See the dispersed bubbly sort of a situation since large number of bubbles are coming and hitting the probe B we get such sort of a totally undulating signal. This particular signal is somewhat similar to the signal we obtain in the liquid slug for the slug flow patterns which shows that liquid slug aerated and they resemble the dispersed bubbly distribution under that circumstances ok. So, therefore, this is a dispersed flow definitely different from the plug flow or the slug flow. Then we come to the stratified flow distribution stratified you see A, B they are completely straight lines nothing is there ok they are completely straight lines. C we find that there are undulations now the all these signals belong to C the first signal shows stratified smooth then you find slight undulations which show it is transition from tra stratified smooth to stratified wavy. And finally, what we find we find a good amount of undulating signal which shows you the, uh, it is stratified wavy ok. So, depending upon the design of the probe that I have that we have done we find that we can actually identify between all the flow patterns that we can encounter in a horizontal gas liquid system and importantly we can actually differentiate between the transitions which is very important. 
identifying transitions is extremely important. Like it is very difficult to differentiate between your uh, slack and bubbly flow. It is very, very difficult okay, because slugs come follow very rapidly, then there is an aerated liquid slug, again a tailor bubbles, always it is not very easy. But if you observe this particular probe signal, you find definitely bubbly flow and slug flow are completely different. In bubbly flow, we just have a totally fluctuating signal and in slug flow, if you observe this particular, this, this slide which I have shown here. The slide which I have shown here, if you observe this particular slide here, the slide which have been shown, yeah. So, in this particular slide, we find that definitely we have partly bubbly flow, then a Taylor bubble, partly bubbly flow, and this is very different from plug flow. These things are extremely important. So, we can actually identify moment we find from this particular plug certain undulations start occurring here, we know that it is slug flow. In annular flow, we find certain undulations or certain spikes start occurring in B, we know it is wavy annular flow. So, this was the condition for the horizontal flow. Now, if we take vertical flow, definitely the situation is much more simpler. Why? Because the number of flow patterns that we have to distinguish are much less in this particular case. We have bubbly flow here, we have slug, we have churn, we have annular. Okay? So, therefore, instead of the 5 probe system what we can have, we have can have one wall mounted electrode here, one small electrode which is the probe A that I, I have said and maybe one particular probe B here. Okay. We measure the effective conductivity between probe A and C, probe B and C. When it is bubbly, probe B will naturally give you such sort of signals. When it is slug, probe B will give you some sort of this particular signals. When it is churn, it will give you some sort of this signal and when it is annular, it will give you a 0 voltage signal. So, the situation becomes much simpler in this particular case. So, this completes our discussions on multiphase flow. We had first made given an introduction, then we discussed the flow patterns, we discussed the simple analytical models, namely the homogeneous flow theory, the drift flux model and the separated flow theory. We did part of rather we did certain, we took up certain specific flow patterns, we did certain flow regime specific models. Since I did not have much time, we just took up gas liquid, bubbly slug and annular flows and we, we formulated the flow regime specific models. You had some idea regarding boiling condensation and finally, since experimentation or measurement of two phase parameters are very important, in a very brief nutshell, I try to emphasize why experimentation is difficult in multiphase flow by telling you the challenges of measuring two phase pressure drop and then we discussed the different techniques which can be adopted for measuring the in situ void fraction and in situ composition and the in situ distribution of the two phases. Primarily we had confined our discussions to gas liquid flow since the maximum number of work has been done on that, but the same techniques or certain modifications can be applied for other two phase flow situations as well. So, this completes our discussion on the basics of multiphase flow. Thank you very much.